So much like all of you, I spent the last week playing Halo Infinite's campaign, and I've got some thoughts on it, so I figured I'd do a review for it here on the channel. So with that being said, let's get right into it. And up first, I want to talk about the story, because I can't really give a Halo review without discussing its story. And I can say that this is probably one of the best stories I've played in a Halo game. And every moment seamlessly ties into the next moment. Dialogue is certainly the tightest it's ever been in a 343 made Halo game, and I'd venture to say that it's some of the best in the series. And as you go throughout the game, the relationships you're able to build with these characters just through the dialogue of the game is actually really strong. And the thing that I liked about Halo 4's story so much is the fact that they made Chief seem a bit more human, as opposed to Halo 1 through 3 where as far as I'm concerned he was just the big green guy who shoots aliens. And with Halo Infinite they managed to give Chief that same human feeling but with less actual dialogue from him, which is a problem I think 343 had with Halo 4. Like, they managed to make me feel more attached to Chief than ever before with that game, but it came at the cost of him almost losing his quiet and composed nature. But in Halo Infinite, when Chief speaks, it feels like it carries weight because you're not always hearing him speak. And like I said earlier, there won't be any spoilers in this video, but there are moments in the story where all Chief needs is just a few words and it was enough to trigger an emotional response from me. In fact, there were numerous times throughout this campaign that I have no shame in saying that I cried a few times, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. But that's the story in general, and up next I want to talk about the characters, and this is a tough one to talk about when I'm trying not to spoil anything, but I will say that 343 did an excellent job with each character's story, and developing those stories throughout the game. I think the weapon is an excellent addition to the series, and does a great job of sort of being an emotional stabilizer between Chief and the pilot, because Chief, as we all know, is a super soldier, and Chief is all about this going to war stuff. He's ready to do anything to save the world, but the pilot is very much the opposite. He's just a guy that desperately wants to make it home alive. He doesn't like the confrontation or the battling with the banished. But in between these two, you've got the weapon who just seems thrilled to be along for the ride, because as we all saw in the trailer back at E3, the weapon should already be dead and gone, but for some reason she's still alive. So she kind of exists in this constant state of disbelief and sort of confusion, but ultimately joy that she's still here and able to help. And I've already explained how I feel about Master Chief in this game. I think it's the best Master Chief I've seen since Halo 3. So if you like that classic bungee, man of very few words Master Chief, but you also enjoy the emotional storytelling that 343 has tried to go for, then I think you'll be very pleased with Chief's character in this game. And one more thing I'd like to add in here just really quick is that 343 also did a really good job calling back to old characters and moments throughout the series so far. And I, I can't really expand on this because I don't want to spoil or ruin anything for you guys, but there will be moments in your playthrough where Chief will say something or something will be said by someone else that'll just make you sort of mentally go back and say, oh, I remember that from like Halo CE or Halo 2 or Halo 3. And there's even some references and callbacks in there for Halo 4, which I thought was really nice. But up next, I want to talk about gameplay, and this is where Halo Infinite really excels past its predecessors, in my opinion, of course. And I want to preface what I'm about to say with the fact that this is my opinion, and I'm pretty sure plenty of people will disagree with it, and that is absolutely fine. But, in my opinion, Halo Infinite is the best feeling Halo game I've ever played. And listen, for the longest time, I was one of those people who thought that Halo 3 was the pinnacle of FPS sandbox-driven gameplay. But when you mix the tools that 343 gives you to work with in this campaign, with the space provided in which to use those tools, it seems like the possibilities are limitless. I mean, the stuff you can do with the physics and the movement in this game completely opens up in the campaign. You've got explosions everywhere from just tossing fusion coils at loads of enemies, and you've got some insane movement abilities with the addition of Chief's limitless grapple shot. I mean, moment to moment, this is, for me, the most fun Halo game I've ever played. 
And I never thought another Halo after Halo 3 would make me say that, but here we are in 2021, and I'm playing what feels like one of the best Halo games ever made, and it's brand new. The weapons feel really tight, and in fact, I'd venture to say it's probably the tightest gunplay has felt in Halo. The BR feels the best it's ever felt, I mean, right up there with the Halo 2 BR, if not better in my opinion. Then you've got the most competent assault rifle a Halo game has ever seen. And then you've got these new weapons like the Commando, which is probably my favorite new weapon in Halo Infinite. But there's also some other really cool weapons like the Stalker Rifle, the Mangler, the Heat Wave, the Disruptor, the Skewer, Cinder Shot, and the Ravager, and also the Pulse Carbine. And each of these weapons, as you would expect, has something different to offer. And since we're speaking about weapons right now, I think it's worth mentioning that I think 343 has absolutely nailed the feel of these weapons. I know this is the first time where I didn't feel that T rating that 343's Halo games have been known for. The guns feel like they deal out some serious impact, and this is in part to how quickly enemies drop when they're killed. It, it manages to have a very visceral feel without having the blood and gore that the original trilogy had. But the weapons and how they feel is cool and all, but you can't talk about Halo gameplay without mentioning the difficulty. I think that in 343's previous game, they had a hard time balancing their difficulties. Halo 5 on Heroic was a breeze up until I got to one of the last fights where I had to kill like three or four Warden Eternals at once. I still haven't beat that game on Heroic simply because of that one fight. I couldn't even imagine trying to solo that fight on Legendary. Halo 4's difficulty felt much more balanced than 5's, but still not as balanced as the original trilogy felt. But with Halo Infinite, I'm thrilled to say it feels incredibly balanced. In fact, I did my first playthrough on Heroic, so a lot of the footage you'll see in this video is from my Heroic difficulty playthrough. And it feels fantastic. There's nothing that feels unfair, and because of that, whenever you die, you're not too upset by it. Because like 99% of the time, if you die, it's because of a mistake you made as opposed to being the fault of the game or the game's design. And actually, I'm playing through the game again, but this time on Legendary, just so I can get that achievement and that special Legendary ending. And even on Legendary, the balance holds up very well. Enemy encounters offer what can sometimes be an absolutely brutal challenge, but the engagements feel incredibly satisfying when you win. I think 343 absolutely nailed the difficulty aspect of this game, so I definitely give kudos to them on that. And since we're talking about difficulty, I figured I'd mention boss fights, because in Halo Infinite, boss fights are back and they're better than they've ever been in my opinion. And I fully realized that that isn't saying much, considering that most boss fights in Halo games up to this point were pretty bland to say the least. I mean, in Halo 2 there was literally a boss fight where you just jumped on the Prophet of Regret and punched him until he died. It was pretty uneventful. And then Halo 5's boss fights just felt incredibly uninspired, considering the fact that you were literally fighting the same person what felt like every other level. But in Halo Infinite, bosses feel unique. Each one brings something different to the table, and each one has a relatively different fight style. From big weapon-toting brutes all the way to quick elites with active camos and energy swords. And there was even a boss fight that was a grunt, which was actually pretty hilarious, quite honestly. And up next, I just want to sort of quickly go over the open world. Now, this is where things get really interesting. I mean, we've never seen an open world Halo game until now. And well, when I first started watching reviews for this game from different channels, I started to get the impression that this open world is actually not really an open world at all, and more of a hub world. Honestly, the more I heard about it, the more I started to think it would be a bit like Gears 5's open world areas. But thankfully in this game you've got a nice big map to explore with tons of secrets and hidden areas to find. It's not exactly the biggest open world map by any stretch of the imagination, but it's big enough to keep you exploring and finding new things throughout your playthrough. And what I really like about this open world is the fact that exploring and taking out enemy bases and recovering fob outposts doesn't feel like a chore the way it does in a lot of these other open world games. In fact, I was really excited to get to the next base, the next outpost, the next boss fight. And here's hoping that the next Assassin's Creed game takes some notes from what 343 has done with this. Not every open world needs to be massive for the sake of being massive. It doesn't need content for the sake of content. But the content it has has to be meaningful, and I'm happy to say 
That's exactly where this open world excels. All in all, I think that Halo Infinite is truly a return to form for the series, and as far as these long-term games go, I think it's got the best base to start with. I'm not quite sure the story is the strongest in the series, but it's really damn good and it's much better executed than 343's other installations into the series. The gameplay feels absolutely incredible and I'd have no problem saying that it's the best that Halo has ever felt to play in my opinion. The game offers enough of a shakeup to the Halo formula to feel fresh for old players while bringing in the new era of Halo fans. And I'm not one to give a game a rating out of 10 or out of 5 or whatever other scale you want to use, but I can firmly say that this is exactly what my favorite series needed, and I'm absolutely thrilled for 343 and what they were able to accomplish with this game, and it must be reiterated that this campaign that we just played is only the start of what's to come over this next decade, and I'm very excited to see what 343 has planned for us next. But what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on Halo Infinite's campaign, and how do you think it stacks up against your favorite Halo games? Leave a comment below and let me know how you feel. Leave a like if you liked the video, and please remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you're enjoying the content and want to stay up to date on all my latest videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.